Good morning. Welcome to St. John this morning. It's a beautiful day, right? Sunny and a little bit cooler to uh, hear God's word and be comforted by that word. Our order of service will be divine service setting three, although I'm going to make one small change today. Um, if you really do need to follow along in the hymnal, the actual confession and absolution, uh, we're going to follow the order of Compline for that. That's at the evening, the late evening service that's in our hymnal. Um, if you need the words, that is on page 254, all right? But it'll be correct on the screens. So if you can read the screens, just follow what it says there for the confession and absolution. All right. Uh, and I think that's it as far as, no, one more announcement. I don't see Julie. Julie uh, Nye called me this morning that Joan actually fell yesterday um, and was in a great deal of pain. It turns out she broke her leg above uh, she said above her knee. So I uh, don't know when surgery will be, maybe today yet, uh, probably tomorrow. So we want to, we always keep Joan in our prayers uh, for her ongoing medical issues, but in particular uh, today with her broken knee and the pain from that. All right, uh, let's begin with a hymn of invocation. All depends on our possessing. That's hymn 732.
invite you to stand if you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. For to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maid servant. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. For to you do I cry all the day. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. 
mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward man. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father, all Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we implore you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because she cannot continue in safety without your aid, preserve her evermore by your help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Trinity is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith for ever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The epistles from Galatians chapters 5 and 6. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who has taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will, from the flesh, reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will, from the Spirit, reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 
Thanks be to God. We stand for the Holy Gospel. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Alleluia. Oh, alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Lord, we be to Thee, O Lord. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will, you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble." This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess together our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
may be seated. We sing our hymn of the day, hymn 760, What God Ordains is Always Good. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
This is the word of the Lord that came to me so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Jesus exhorts you today, do not worry about your life. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. So listen to him. Be confident, patient, and content with what you have and who you are. There it is. That's his word. Done. That's your word for today. Go and do it. Stop being anxious. Don't worry. Be happy. Sermon over. Never mind. <laughs> uh, but it's not that easy, is it? We worry all the time. We are constant, constantly anxious about our lives, what's going on in our community and what we hear happening in the world. We talk endlessly about the economy and the cost of living and gas prices and taxes. We look to the sky for fear of the next cataclysmic storm. We look to the earth and worry about whether it will yield its fruit in due season. We anxiously wonder about our children, whether they will turn out to be good people. Or we despair that our children will never shape up. We go to work fearful that the boss will lash out at us this day, or the coworker will stab us in the back for the promotion. You'll note that the things that cause us the most worry, anxiety, and fear are the things that God promises to give and to protect. He gives them by promise in the creed and in the prayer, and then protects them with the Ten Commandments. In the creed, God the Father and Maker of heaven and earth promises everything you need for your body. God the Son gives you everything that you need for salvation through his suffering and death. God the Holy Spirit gives you faith in his church to keep you with the Father and the Son today and always. That's his promise. You confessed it. So why do you worry? Why are you anxious? What are you afraid of? The simple answer given by the Holy Word is that we do not fear, love, and trust in God above all things. That is a harsh word of judgment for our sin and rebellion. We might think that God actually likes accusing us, like some kind of abusive father who enjoys inflicting pain on the weaker than him. We might also think that, that then that God's preachers are like-minded sadists who get off making Christ's flock miserable by always telling them how much they're poor, miserable sinners. We think that the goal, then, by preaching the word, is to drive people away from the church, not back to God. And of course, that would be true if the only thing we preached was what God's law tells us. That would be true if the Father had not also given his son Jesus to die for us and to forgive us for our rejection of him. Without the gospel of Jesus Christ crucified, forgiveness received and given, the law is a bludgeon to kill us and then leave us for dead. But again, the chief reason that God would show us our sin, this is Paul's assertion in Galatians, it was given because of trespasses. The law was given to show us our sin then, not so that we are left there for dead, but that they be forgiven. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. His holy law is given that we would see our fear, anxiety, and worry for just what it is, unbelief. We should fear and love God, but we don't. We worry about what the Fed and the bankers will do with interest rates because we fear them. We complain and whine about politicians because we mistakenly trust in them. We despair for the future of our country because we love it and can't let go of it. And so these rule with fear, promoted by their demonic agents in the media and the internet and corporations and activists, organizations, and even charitable ch churches. These big boogeymen are favorites to complain about because we fear, love, and trust in them, 
wrestle away from God what is only his, that fear, love, and trust. That's just out there, some distant enemy that, yes, intrudes in our life, but arguably we can't really do much about. The commandments drive us instead closer to home. God reveals to us that the enemy isn't just out there, but actually the enemy is our own hearts. We do not fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We love our bodies to the life of worshiping, or to the point of worshiping them, idolatry. All the gifts promised by God in the creed, which I've already heard mentioned, for our body and our life and our salvation, they become objects to fear, love, and trust in themselves, apart from the one who gave them. So let's say it another way. We take God's good gifts, our body, life, even salvation, and make them an object of worship themselves, rather than the giver of those good gifts, God. So that's why our whole life is consumed with endless fretting about getting more and more of those trifles. We hold on to the gifts so tightly that they become then a curse to us. We fear losing God's gifts. And so then we refuse to love and serve our neighbor. We hoard them for ourselves. We love the pleasures of life, but don't give God the praise for them. We trust in our own efforts to build and preserve the church rather than believing and trusting that God, the Holy Spirit, alone is responsible for preserving the preaching of the gospel and the giving out of the sacred mysteries. But God will not have us fearing any other God, not even the God in our own hearts. He will not let us love others more than him. He will reclaim trust in him for everything needed in body and life. And so he has given us at the nexus between the promises of the creed and the rejection of those promises in the Ten Commandments, prayer. Right between them is prayer, and specifically, the na- na- and namely, the Lord's Prayer. This and any other prayer grounded in the promises of God and his word is how we Christians return to God in confession and for faith. We cannot pray to God and at the same time worship wealth, country, life, or whatever else that we falsely fear, love, and trust in. The Lord's Prayer returns us back to God in faith, asking for what he's already promised. We pray, then, not doubting, but firmly believing that he hears our prayers and will well provide them. So we we ask in the prayer that he put his name on us in baptism and not in any other earthly savior, and that his name would then be on our lips in every time of need, and in praise and in thanks. We ask in the prayer that he, not not us, preserve his holy church among us by his word and spirit. We ask that God do what he has always promised and wills to do, even despite our doubts. We ask for the daily bread that he gives to all, even without our prayers, even as he does for the birds and the lilies. We ask for God the Father to forgive us for all the ways that we should fear and love him and his commandments, but don't. We ask Jesus to lead us through this valley of sorrow and into the way of life. We ask God to deliver us from all evil, even the evil in our own hearts and in our church and in our workplace and in our community and even in our world. Deliver us. We ask for what we believe God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit alone can give. And that is actually everything. Whatever is needed for body, life, and salvation. How does God work such confidence so that we can actually pray in this way? He says, you will have no other gods. Now, of course, we hear this as an accusation. We should fear and love and trust in God above all things, and we don't. And yet it's also a promise. He will be our God and we will be his people. And the good news then is that he will do this without and even despite us. He will be our God and we will be his people. He won't ever leave you or forsake you even though you wander daily from him through your sin and unbelief. He won't stop his loving care for you even when you despair of him and 
wring your hands in worry and hopelessness. He won't stop calling you back into his church to be forgiven, restored, and renewed in the faith, even when you seem to think that the church is all about yours, yours to build, preserve, and grow. He will, daily, tear down every idol in your heart's throne so that he is your God and he alone. And only then, and by his work, can his exhortation be true. Don't worry about your life. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. So as he says, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that's Jesus, and all these things shall be added to you. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the word of the Lord that came to me, so that you may believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life today and always in his name. Amen. We stand to sing. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you see how this world, its mammon, its clothing, and its possessions tempt us to worry and doubt. Yet you know all our needs of body and soul and promise to care for us. Call us by your gospel to entrust everything into your sure hands. Lord, in your mercy. All supplying Lord, you promise to provide for the proclamation of your gospel. Make your church and her pastors bold to build upon your word that in times of woe and uncertainty she may never cease to share your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Master, your Son warns that we cannot truly serve you and pursue security in worldly wealth. Grant us firm faith in your provision and the peace which this world cannot give. Lord, in your mercy. Good and gracious God, you have blessed us richly. We rejoice with your gifts, especially this week, those celebrating the gift of life, Maya, Mina, and Shinar, those rejoicing in the gift of new life and baptism, Don, Kyle, and Dwayne, those celebrating the, the gift of holy matrimony, Norm and Sandy, Garrett and Jenny, Walt and Ruth, Jed and Rebecca, Ron and Sandra. Pray for all the households of our church that you would bless them richly this week, but especially with Tom, Dale and Pam, Steve and Morgan, Aaron and Elaine, Chad and Jolene, and Dennis. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord God, you have set our president and our governor and indeed all authorities over us for our good. Bless and sustain them with all that they need to govern us, that we might be wisely ruled and in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy. 
Bow down your ear, O Lord, and hear our cry on behalf of all who suffer in body and soul. We especially remember Joan, Dr. Falling, also Pam, Joe, Kelsey, Dennis, Naomi, Christopher, Marcy, and Brad, Ron, Doug, Bev, Donna, Jim, Pat, Wendell, Darlene, and District President Willie. Save your servants, heal them, and bear witness thereby to your mercy in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Increase our faith, O Lord, and grant that all who come to your supper may come in repentance, seeking your forgiveness, and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving God your all-sufficient generosity will provide every need in time and eternity. Increase our faith. Still our anxious hearts. Call us to share the blessings of this world in view of your promises in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Father in heaven, you sustained Elijah and your saints of old through weal and woe, plenty and scarcity. Inspire us in the light of their faith to walk through all circumstances until we join them at your unending banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for all this and whatever else you know that we need, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, oh, oh, Holy, oh, oh, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God, that takest away
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth for heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated to sing our closing hymn. And trust your days and burdens. Entrust your days and burdens to God's most loving hand. He cares for you while ruling the sky, the sea, the land. For he who guides the tempest along their thunderous ways 
will find for you a pathway and guide you all your days. Rely on God your Savior and find your life secure. Make his work your foundation that your work may endure. No anxious thought, no worry, no self-tormenting care can win your Father's favor. His heart is moved by prayer. Take heart, have hope, my spirit, and do not dismay. God helps in every trial and makes you unafraid. Await its time with patience through dark hours of night until the sun you hoped for delights your eager sight. Leave all to his direction, his wisdom rules for you. In ways that rouse your wonder, as all his love can do. Soon he, his promise keeping, with wonder working powers, will banish from your spirit what gave you trouble. Old hours. O blessed air of heaven, you'll hear the song resound. Belation when you with life are crowned in your right hand. Acre will place the victor's palm, and you will thank him glad with heaven's joyful song. Our hands and feet, Lord, strengthen with joy, our spirits bless. Until we see the ending of all our life's distress. And so throughout our lifetime, keep us within your care. And let your hand bring us to heaven to praise you there. Can you hear me? Oh, I guess the mic was on when we were singing. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> Here's your announcements. They're on the goldenrod sheet. Uh, one that's not on there, I think, is Voters Assembly next Sunday. Um, I have it on the screen as after Bible class, but actually the Board of Directors is going to have to decide if that's acceptable. I'd rather not omit Bible class, um, because that's God's Word, and our business can happen anytime. Um, so look out, I'll send an announcement once we confirm that on Thursday night at the Board of Directors, whether it's immediately after church or whether um, you'll need to stay through Bible class. I'm going to twist your arm to, to listen to God's Word some more. Um, we do have Bible class today. And we're in the gospel section of Ezekiel, so if you've been scared away because you didn't want to hear too much judgment of the law, not today. All right, so I encourage you to stay. We have coffee and uh, snacks, I think. I think uh, Karen brought those, right? Yeah. 
Uh, and then there's lots of opportunities for you both for continuing studying God's Word and to uh, help those in need. That's again on the goldenrod sheet. All right, did I miss anything important? All right, no? What? Auction's coming up? Yeah, so check that out too. Make plans for that. All right, God be with you all, and we'll see you in a minute.